In this video, we're going to start routing the traces on the board. And really, there are two kinds of structures that we're going to create. We're going to create traces. Those are the connections between pads. And we're going to create vias. And the vias are the connections between traces on different layers. Remember, we've got the ground on the bottom layer. And so any ground connection, we're going to drop a via down to the bottom plane to make a connection. We're also going to look at adjusting the uh, default via dimension so that every time we pop a via, it comes up to the smallest default size. For most of the routing, we're going to use a grid of five. That'll give us the cleanest connection to the uh, location of the pads on the components. There's an order to the routing that is preferred. Of course, if connectivity is the only thing we care about, then it doesn't matter how we do the routing. But we also care about performance. And there are two really important features that we're going to take advantage of to decrease the noise that might be generated. One is the location of the decoupling capacitor close to the IC. And we're going to route that um, with uh, short traces and wide traces. And the second is the length of the uh, ground paths from a pad on the top to the ground via. We're going to also make that a short path. Those are going to be the most important nets that we route. And so we're going to want to route those initially. And then we're going to route the connections between all the other pads and be very, very careful of a cross under. We want to think of the ground as sacred. We want to avoid having to do a cross under because that will put a gap in the return path. If we ever have to use a cross under, then we want to make sure it's short. Let's get started. At this point, we're ready to do some routing. There are two structures that we're going to route or build. One are, is going to be the actual traces of copper, often called tracks. And the second is going to be the vias that connect from one layer to the next. We've already got our ground plane or ground polygon pour on the bottom layer. And we've got our components on the top layer with a little rat's nest, the ghost lines, telling us who's going to be connected where. The most important attribute of a track is its line width. And yeah, we can draw a bunch of tracks and then change their width as we go, but we want the tool to do things for us as automatically as we can. And here's a simple trick that we can use in order to set it to do it automatically. To, to draw tracks on the, on the board, we're going to use the toolbar up here, and we're going to select the interactive routing. So as soon as we select that, our cursor has changed, and this allows us to uh, uh, draw uh, traces wherever we click the mouse. So we click it once, it draws the starting place, we click it again, it, it draws the end point, and we still are in that interactive mode, we haven't left that line, and so now we can kind of continue that process as much as we want. Uh, we're clicking the mouse to kind of fix the vert vertex, and if we want to stop at this point, we push escape, that stops at the last place we clicked, we still have the cursor in that interactive mode, and so we escape again, and now we've cleared our cursor. This line that we drew, if we click it once, we identify one of the line segments. If we click it once to highlight it, and then we click tab, we uh, highlight all of the traces on that net. And if we want to see what the attributes of that object are, after all, we just created a new object in the database, that means it has properties, we pull up the properties window, and let's see, that's 15 mils. So this was set as a default value of 15 mils. I don't want 15 mils. I want either 20 mils for our power nets, or I want 6 mils for signal lines. How do I set that? Really simple. Here's what we're going to do. That interactive tool, when I click and highlight it, my cursor now is the interactive tool, the routing tool. If I click tab, that pauses the use of that tool, but, but I'm still, I still have that tool open, and I've brought up automatically the properties page of that tool. And this is where we set the automatic or the default values. Right now it's set for 15 mils. I want 6 mils. Now, every time I draw a line, it's 6 mils. Every time I go back and grab my interactive routing tool, it's 6 mil wide lines. And so, if I am going to route a whole bunch of 6 mil wide lines, I'm going to do that all initially so that I don't have to change the default value for the interactive routing tool. If I'm going to route power traces that I want to be 
20 mils, then I'm going to set the default to be 20 mils. Now, some of these should have come in already uh, with the knowledge in the um, in the layout tool that they're 20 mil lines because we set that as a parameter rule uh, right at the beginning. So uh, we're going to uh, uh, set the default values for the interactive routing tool. We're going to route um, our traces, uh, and we'll do the same for vias. Now, these traces here that I've just routed, I don't really care about them anymore. I'm going to get rid of them. And we're going to do the same thing with the via tool. The way we place a via is we grab the place via tool. And again, the same thing. We want the default values for these vias that we place to be 13 mil drill, 25 mil um, uh, for the clearance hole. So let's double click. Brings up the properties tab for this. And sure enough, it's set for the default. If it wasn't, and we wanted to set the default, we click our, our placement tool. We have it in the placement tool mode for the cursor. We push tab, that pauses it, brings up the properties page, and here's where we change those default values. And so every time, I'll just push return to lock it in, every time we place a via, it's going to be that standard size. Okay, now let's do some routing. The most important traces that we're going to route are going to be First, between the um, IC and its nearest decoupling capacitor, we want those to be short, wide traces. And the second path that we're going to uh, route are going to be the uh, ground vias to the pads and the connections from ground pads to the vias. And so let's route those initially. So I'm going to grab my interactive routing tool. I'm going to make a connection. And here's my connection between the, um, the power pad and my IC the, the um, decoupling capacitor. And you notice my cursor's jumping all around. Oh, it's really hard to do that routing. That's because my grid, if you notice at the very lower left corner of the screen, the grid is 100 mils. That's way too large. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, ch I'm gonna change that. G opens up the grid. I'm gonna make it 20 mils. If I can route everything on 20 mils, that's great. So I'm gonna route from the IC pad to the decoupling capacitor. And um, because there was some knowledge of that name of that trace, it was not the default value. So I'm going to just manually make that trace 20 mils wide. Now that's the important one. Everything else is uh, a little extra. Next, I'm going to route all of the uh, ground vias. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to grab my via tool and I'm going to place it in proximity to wherever I think I need a ground via. Uh, let's see, I'm going to have a ground via over here. I'm going to put it in proximity. Remember, I'm going to Gosh, I'm on a 20 mil grid, and look, I really want to get along the center. That center is aligned on a 10 mil grid point, so I'm going to change the grid to 10 mils. And for now, that's probably a better routing grid. So I'm going to put a via there. I could come in and say, okay, I'm done with the via. I'll grab my interactive routing tool, uh, and, and I'll make a path from the ground to the via. Let's see, um, what is the interactive uh, routing tool set for? I double click on this line segment. Yeah, there's my six mils. Okay, we're in good shape. I could do that, or I could just come along and place all the vias first and then do the routing of the signal. So let's do that. So I'm going to grab my interactive, uh, my via placement tool, place a via here and here and here and here. And let's see, where else? Oh, I need one over here. Where else? Oh, I need one over here. I need one over here. Uh, I think that's, oh, I need one over here. And now while I'm here, and that U is a little bit too close, that's in the silk screen, click to highlight it. And I'm just gonna move it over to this location over here. That's the identifier for my 555 timer. Okay, I think that's most of them. Now let's add the signal lines. So I grab my interactive router. I come over here and I'm gonna do from here to here. And let's see, oh, I've got another one from here to here. Uh, let's see, where else? So I'm going to zoom out so I can see everybody, and then I'm going to move over. So I'm just using um, control scroll with the mouse, and that lets me zoom in and out. Uh, let's see, any other vias? Ah, uh, here's one, here to here, here to here here to here. These are really easy to do because it's just a simple point-to-point -point connection, right? We're done. And you know, 
I've, I think I've gotten all the vias. You know what? Relatively short path. If I'm going to solder the pad, keeping it, you don't want it any closer than 20 mils, and roughly 20 to, to 30 mils is a good location. That way it acts as thermal relief so that I don't suck heat out of that pad, and I can fit a nice layer of, a nice amount of solder mask bridge um, on, on those traces. Uh, I think I've gotten all the ground vias. And while I'm here, I'm going to do the low-hanging fruit. I'm going to do the quick, easy things. So I've got a connection from that via to that resistor, that via to that resistor. And if I'm using a good grid, then it almost locks in place really, really easily. Uh, what the heck? While I'm here, I will do that one here. We've got this one. And remember, I haven't really changed my line width. I'm using six mils everywhere. And let's see, here's that switch. Here's our test point. So we can look at the 555 timer before it goes into the, um, the LEDs. Oh, and one last one. I'm going to do my test point. I want to measure the voltage on this resistor with this test point. I can't go directly across. I don't want to cross under here. This is a topology problem. We're going to encounter these all the time. My first preference is keep the ground plane intact. Don't do a cross under if I can avoid it. And so I can do some easy routing over here. We'll shoot across, up and over. And there we go. Remember, if we have a nice ground plane, we're not going to introduce noise on this trace, however long it is, uh, if it's far enough away from other traces and if there's a continuous return plane underneath it. So I think I've got most of the low-hanging fruit. Um, and in the next video, we're going to look at doing two things. Um, we're going to route the power traces that are going to be a little wide, and then we're going to look at how we route this guy over here, where there's clearly some congestion. So let's start up again in the next video, and we're going to route the power traces.